I'm here standing next to the Kesman Runestone in the Runestone Museum in Alexandria, Minnesota. 124 years ago, in a field in Kensington, Minnesota, a Scandinavian farmer found a stone with writing on it in his field. But not just any old writing, Scandinavian runes. Runes that are made from Vikings, that tell a tale of a band of those Vikings on an expedition of exploration. This stone would start debates on how deep in North America these Norsemen got, and if it was even possible. That inf information is from Paul Nelson in the article, Kensington Runestone, on the website mnopedia.org. This is the Kensington Runestone. Now, you've probably heard of it before, and maybe even have watched documentaries and seen theories about the stone and the validity of its origins. The stone includes an inscription, possibly, possibly made by Vikings, that reads, We're eight Goths, Swedes, and 22 Norwegians on an exploration journey from Vinland through the west. We had camp by a lake with two scaries, those are small rocky islands, one day's, nor one day's journey north from this stone. We were out and finished we were out and fished, sorry, one day after we came home, we found ten of our men, red with blood and dead. Aviem, Ave Virgo Mary, or, or Hail Virgin Mary, save us from evil. We have ten of our party by sea to look after our ships. Fourteen day journey from this island. Year 1362. I found that translation on the website, from the same website written by, same article written by Paul Nelson, sorry. Now that, now what could that mean? Well, I did some research, <coughs> oh, <coughs> sorry, I googled it, okay. And according to Lisa Shea in the article, transport and horses on the website, lisashea.com, medieval pilgrims could walk. 10 to 20 miles on average in a day, and if need be, they could travel farther. But these were Vikings on an exploration mission. So if let's say they walked three miles per hour, a three mile per hour pace for 10 hours, they could walk 30 miles in a day. And according to Emily Crockleton in the article, average, rocky, average walking pa speed, pace in comparison by age and gender on the website, healthline.com. The average walking speed for a human is around three to four miles per hour. And we can assume that these Vikings took breaks and probably ran a bit. So let's say they traveled for around 10 hours in a day. So that means they could have traveled 30 to 40 miles in one day. And in two weeks, that's 40, 420 miles to 560 miles. Those distances can be accurate as their late they all, there are lakes 30 to 40 miles north in which and with the Great Lakes being within 420 to 560 mile range and can be confused for seas. So why the controversy? Well, it all has to do with how it's found. According to Paul Nelson's article, the Kensington Runestone was discovered by a Swedish farmer, Olaf Omen and his sons, a.k.a. Olaf and the Omelets, disputed, when they were clearing some trees. Once word got out about the stone's existence, the stone was immediately looked at by several runologists, and the stone was declared a hoax. But how could Olaf, an uneducated farmer, have any knowledge about the runes? Well, it turns out he had a small library in his house with some books, on runes in it. I am at the Kensington Runestone Park. This is a be very beautiful park, and unfortunately, it is a very cold park right now. As you can see by the amount of snow on the ground, it is cold. This is the spot where the Kensington Runestone was discovered. I already set all the lines for this part at the museum just in case something happened where I couldn't make it here. This is just really proof that I did put in the effort to come here. It's just cold. 
and I don't have that amount of effort. So I'm going back. So, is it real? Well, it's, it is possible. How would he have known that there were Vikings in North America in 1362? How did he have knowledge of the runes, and how could he have known the distance of a day's travel? Would put him by a lake, and two weeks put him in the Great Lakes. And, according to Paul Nelson's article, an analysis of the runes in 2003 placed them at over 200 years old. But there are some problems. According to that same Paul Nelson article, the weathering is wrong. Being exposed to the wind and rain would weather the, what, the writing more than it has been. Also, according to the article, the Kensington Runestone, Fasting Find or Fake News, on the website history.co.uk, the calcite section of the stone, right here, the calcite section of the stone should be more weathered than the rest as calcite is a softer stone. Another suspicious aspect was that Olaf Ullman, the farmer who discovered it, was Scandinavian himself, which honestly didn't really help his case at all. But what do I think? Well, in all honesty, I don't know. Yes, there is a lake within a day's walking trip, but this is Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. It'd be more impressive if there weren't any lakes. But honestly, that doesn't disprove it. The weathering could have just been a lucky spot. Maybe it was blocked by a tree or something. I think it's possible that we just have not found the other Viking artifacts yet, too. Or they just never made it this far into North America. I guess we'll never know for sure, until more evidence is found proving it's real or proving it's a hoax. But honestly, I think it's a, at very least a bit of, of a fun quirk in Minnesota's culture and history.